My name is Jesse Baker, and when I just say heard that I was speaking here tonight, I told my roommate that I was just a little nervous. And he asked me, is it because that you're going to speak in front of about a thousand people? And I told him no. It's the fact that I'm going to speak in front of about a thousand people and literally say gorilla penis that really kind of makes me nervous. So I, I put this slide on here just to prove to you that I'm not that weird of a guy. Basically, I took a class during my undergraduate career in anthropology, and it was just very, very thought-provoking. And, and in this class, we read a couple of books by uh, Pulitzer Prize-winning author Dr. Jared Diamond. And one of the aspects that really stood out to me was the fact that the human penis is just so much larger than the other great apes. And there's really no theory as to why. So, this is my talk on sexual selection and family humidity. There's a lot of information, so I'm going to run through real quick. Um, the human has the average uh, penis length of 5.7 inches, an average testes weight of 42 grams, and we mostly practice monogamy. Uh, the next great ape is the gorilla, with an average body weight of over 300 pounds. But the poor guy only has an average penis length of 1.25 inches and an average testes weight of 16 grams. This is obviously where the term overcompensation comes into place. And the basic thing to know about chimpanzees is that they have massive testicles. Almost four times bigger than humans and nine times bigger than gorillas. Orangutans physically are somewhere in, bet in between all the other great ape species, and the same with their mating system. But they can't have sex while hanging from trees, so I figure that's pretty cool. <laughs> and the last one is bonobos, which if you'll see, it actually have, they have a, a length that's longer than humans, but human penises are just a lot girthier. <laughs> And as you can see here, this kind of gives you a visual representation of, of, of the species. And yes, that is a sad gorilla, you got it. So the first theory has to do with changing female anatomy due to bipedalism. And basically, the, male, the human penis had to evolve and grow bigger just to keep step, to, to increase reproductive success. The next hypothesis is also about changing female anatomy, but this time it has to do with giving birth to human babies in their large freaking heads. <laughs> uh, bigger heads, wider pelvis, larger birth canal. Fisher's runaway selection model, or the peacock theory, <laughs> states that women are attracted to fancier structures. <laughs> They have more mates, and these mates then pass on those genes to their offspring, who then pass their genes on to their offspring, and so on and so on and so on for hundreds of generations. And that's why I got bigger. <laughs> and my favorite, of course, is the threat display hypothesis, or as I like to call, the logarithm hypothesis. And, and this theory, and this hypothesis states that the penis is a display order, but not for women, but for men, to intimidate, emasculate. And uh, a, a, a lot of examples come from the instances of phallic art in all sorts of cultures around the world. I thought phallic art was really interesting. They're sheets, apparently, is the correct term. And another big difference between the species is the size of the testicles. And this has to do with um, multiple males mating with a single female. And when this happens, there's intense competition uh, to fertilize the egg. And of course, in humans, we don't have as big a testicles because we're monogamistic. We don't have as, as much sperm competition, therefore our testicles don't need to be as big. <laughs> and of course, we are monogamistic because of babies. That's me, obviously. <laughs> there are trade-offs, and it became apparent that parents need to stick together to raise children. Parents? You, you can tell me, how long does it take to raise a child? 26 years? <laughs> but anyway, this is my talk on sexual selection and family humidity. Please reach out to me on Twitter. And if you'd like more information, go to my Tumblr site where I put together a reading list.
Thank you. You're great.